So here we're on the streets now, and at this point there are just nurses everywhere, okay? You can easily rack up 75 shooting kills here alone, possibly even more, I reckon you could get about 95, even 100 if you, if you went crazy, okay, exploring every single nook and cranny available to you. But at this point I'm still just uh, carrying on with melee kills, alright? I'm not sure, I haven't really been tallying how many I've got at this point, okay, but you've seen me pausing the game frequently, okay, and that's just to jot down on a piece of paper how many I've killed. For this area, I tend to kill about four to five before I pause it and jot down the points on the piece of paper, okay, you know, just make a mental note. But uh, sometimes that works against you, you know, you can forget and miscalculate, so... It's probably the best just to do it after every kill, but you know, I just get a little impatient here. Now this part, on my previous attempt at going for the 10 star rank, I found I was taking too much damage from the nurses here. Realistically, you should not be getting hit once in this entire area, okay? It's, it's very easy. If you get hit by a nurse once, okay, fair enough, let it go, but if you start taking two, three, and even four hits, reload your save and do this shit again, okay? The only advice I can give you in relation to trying not to get hit in this section is when you start, when you equip out to the shotgun and start going to the shooting kills here, like I do pretty soon, you don't want to get right up close to these nurses, okay? Because some of them have pipes, pretty much all of them, I think, carrying pipes and they will swing it ferociously, okay, like they are very very fast when they swing the pipe and you know, being a shotgun and all, you think, yeah, yeah, I've got to get close in order for it to be effective just, you don't, don't, okay, you do not need to get in that close with the shotgun but don't be too far away, either. I mean, don't stand across the other side of the road when they're on the other side and start shooting, you know, that's going to take about 12 shots them to take down. Even there, where I was just then, there's a comfortable distance, you know, to start shooting with the shotgun. But look, you're going to see me when I equip it. Okay, so here we go. I've got the shotgun here, and you'll see how close I sort of get, alright? I'm not that close there, but follow up with the point blank range on the ground. Wait till they fully get up, shoot again, they will go down, and you can tell when they're dead when your radio static starts to fade, okay? Stops crackling and all that type of stuff. Now, the key thing there is when you get in close when they're incapacitated on the ground and shoot them at point blank range, nine times out of ten that will not kill them, okay? And they will get up again. Do not shoot while they are in the animation of getting up because that doesn't do anything to them. That's what I like to term an invincibility frame for them. It may damage them, I'm not sure, but the problem with that is, we'll see if it happens here, okay, so as you can see I wait completely till they're up, shoot again at point blank range, okay, and they'll go down. The problem is if you shoot while they're in the animation of actually getting up, before they're fully standing up, alright, you will shoot them. The problem is you don't have enough time to fire that second shot um, before they hit you, okay? So they will hit you before you manage to fire off that second shot, okay? Because there is a bit of a cooldown period between shots. Like I mentioned when we were facing that flesh lip sub-boss just before. You know, you shoot, James does a little quick reload, and there's a bit of a cooldown period before he can fire that next shot, okay? So this... This is the best, best method I've found in terms of taking down these nurses here, okay? We'll try and go through it again when we encounter one, so here we go. Fair distance away, not too close, not too far. Shoot, get in close, shoot again. Wait till they're fully up. Bang, shoot again, okay? That will always send them down to the ground. You know, if you're shooting that close a distance with the shotgun, they will always fall to the ground, okay? So you don't need to worry about them just staggering back and hitting you. If you are that close to them, they are always going to either fall down and be incapacitated, or you'll probably just kill them outright. That was a little risky there, that 
That pipe looked like it was almost going to hit me. Okay. You can tend to get a little bit impatient in this area because... For me, in terms of going for the 10 star rank, this was the most tedious and frustrating area. Because on a previous attempt, I actually took too much damage from the nurses here. I think I got to hit about three, four times with the pipe. It's unacceptable, okay? You should not be getting hit at all. One hit, fair enough, okay? Two, oh, nah. You can probably let it slide, but if you take three or more, forget it. Reload your previous save, okay? And do this again. And the reason why it pissed me off is because I was almost at the historical society when I got hit, hit third or fourth time. It was probably the fourth time. Uh, and I had to reload and do all this again, okay? Very, very frustrating. It's just annoying and boring, okay? Because you've got to just spend the time, find all these nurses, kill them, go through, you know, go through all the streets, all the different ways, finding all the nurses. Very, very frustrating. So try and just get this right on the first time. And uh, you, you don't want to really do this again, okay? Because straight after this, when you enter the historical society, pretty much you're going to go straight to the prison area. You don't want to make any mistakes in that area either. Because, you know, the next save is going to be virtually at the end of the prison area, okay? Uh, just before you fight Eddie. And the prison area goes for... A fair while. I mean, it's not too bad. There aren't as many enemies as there are here or in the hospital area. It's a relatively easy uh, area to get through in regards to that. But, you know what I mean? You don't want to fuck up towards the end of the prison area and think, shit, I've taken too much damage. Um, I haven't reached the Eddie save yet. Fuck, I've got to reload my previous save, which was in the hospital area. Do that pyramid head chase scene again, do all this shit again, do all the fucking uh, prison shit again, okay? So, from this point on, up until the Eddie boss fight, um, you really want to play uh, near perfectly, okay? If you're uncomfortable with abstract daddy boss fight, go ahead and save just before him, okay? I do. Look, there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. The problem is, is I just wish I sort of held out, I sort of just wish I knew how to take care of Abstract Daddy without taking damage um, before I went ahead and did this 10 star rank run, okay, because he is really easy to get through it without taking damage, but the first couple of times I tried to fight him, you know, I just tried using the shotgun and maneuvering around him. He grabbed me about eight times and that was just fucked. Okay, I had to use two med packs. It was bullshit. So, look, if you're not comfortable with that boss fight, no problem. Save just before the abstract daddy fight. If you're comfortable that you can get past him without taking any damage, okay? If you want to see the way I do it first and then, you know, have a look at it and just do it that way, go ahead and wait wait before you save, okay, um, kill Abstract Daddy and then save the next save just before the Eddie boss fight. So there's some more ammo, rifle shells, there's going to be a fair bit of rifle shells that we're picking up now, okay. Like I mentioned before, for hard difficulty the rifle is fucking shit, okay, it's almost as bad as the handgun in terms of its damage. Um, if I was to take care of these enemies on the streets with the rifle, I'm not really sure how many, how much ammo they'd be taking down. That, that enemy I just took down there, and I'm not sure what they're called, but they're like legs and then more legs on the top. Those things there. When I was in the hotel area on hard, I actually used the rifle to try and take down those guys. My god, the amount of shots it took was ridiculous. I think I gave up and just reverted to the shotgun to take care of them or I may have just melee kick, kicked them when they're on the ground to end it because it was just taking way too many shots okay the hotel area later on is pretty easy you can get through that entire area in about 10 minutes okay there are some enemies but look 
when you get to the hotel area, the enemies there, you will not be killing anything, okay? You are running past everything. There are a few abstract daddy type enemies, so to speak. So, the abstract daddy boss we face in the prison area, there's actually a few more of them in the hotel, and I think they're called Dorman, okay? They take an absolute beating to take down on hard, alright? And to take them down, you are going to take damage, alright? So what I like to do is just run past them, you know, fair enough, they probably grab me once or twice anyway, but, you know, it's just a waste of time trying to kill them, they take way too much damage. On beginner, they go down in about one or two shots with the rifle. On hard here, they take about 20, okay, it's just absolute bullshit. Even with the shotgun, they take a lot of a lot of shots, and they are fast as well, okay? They are basically running towards you. It's very unfair. So, hotel area, you will not be racking up any kills. So, try to get your 75, 75 melee and gun shoot kills prior to, to uh, getting to the hotel area. Worst case scenario, you're just a couple kills short, you know, two, three maybe okay no problem because there are a couple of uh, these these types of enemies actually there are a couple of them floating around so you can get about two or three maybe kills I know there's two definitely in the basement of the hotel area so that's guaranteed two there are a couple more floating around but there is a section in the hotel where you have to get rid of all your items even your guns and weapons so there may be more than two, but you can't actually kill them, all right? So look, just to be on the safe side, when you get to the hotel area, make sure you've got your 75 melee kills and 75 shooting kills. That way you're set, okay? And there's no need to worry about it. So we're still just running around this area here, collecting all the shotgun ammo, handgun ammo, picking up med kits and all that type of stuff. I probably don't need to be picking up as much items that I'm doing so here, you know. When I finished this 10 star rank, I had about 202 items. You only need 150, okay? But, you know, it's all it's all good, you know. I, I try to collect as much ammo as I can, okay? So, especially shotgun ammo. When you're playing through this game the first seven times, you know, in order to get all the endings, you will, I strongly recommend searching every nook and cranny of the area multiple times. By doing that, you will become familiar of every single location of ammo and health pack and so on. Um, there are, you know, this is my 10th, 11th playthrough of this game, and there's still areas where I probably forget items and, and just can't remember, okay? Just remember the key areas, especially where the areas where shotgun ammo are. Okay, shotgun ammo is very precious. I mean, you've got, I've got a shitload of it here, over 260, 250 bullets or so, which is crazy, okay? But shotgun ammo, at least try and remember the location of that, okay? Handgun ammo and so on. Small health potions, look, you can probably skip a few of them, okay? not really necessary, you're going to be getting a lot just from playing in the apartments, hospital, prison and hotel areas anyway, okay? So it's not a big deal if you just skip a few of them, alright? But rule of thumb, if you see an item, just pick it up, okay? And like I mentioned before, if you get close to an item, <laughs> there was a pretty that just fell down there. When you get close to an item and it's difficult to see, you'll notice James's head tilt either left or right in the direction of that item, okay? That's the game giving you a hint, yes, there is an item near, stop and look for it, okay? So just be wary of James's head tilting either left or right, okay? And here we're just picking up the wrench, which is what we need in order to progress. Okay, story related item. Don't forget about that. We've got to make our way through Rosewater Park again. Dig up a box which contains the key to the historical society. Okay, then we can go through. But for now, still just doing a lot of killing with a shotgun. 
like I said, the most tedious part of the game, okay? Once you get to the prison area, it's pretty much smooth sailing from then on, okay? A lot of people that go for the 10 star ranking here tend to rack up a few gun kills before they've left the hospital area, whereas I virtually had zero gun kills upon exiting the hospital. I suppose it's a good idea in some ways because, alright, well let's say for example we leave the hospital like we have now with zero kills, okay? So this whole point up until we get to the historical society, <coughs> we need to rack up about 65 gun kills, okay? Not only that, but quite a number of melee kills as well. Now, say we get to the prison area, we progress a bit and blah blah blah, eventually we die before we get to abstract daddy. That means we've got to do all this shit again, okay, get the 70, 65 uh, kills with firearms and however many with melee, and if you were to get gun kills prior to exiting the hospital, okay, prior to your first save, you wouldn't need to do as much legwork, okay? So that's one benefit of getting kills prior to leaving the hospital area. However, you know, I didn't because, I don't know, I just like getting through certain areas as quick as possible. You know, like the apartments, I just blitz through that. Hospital, I sort of just blitz through that as well. I don't like spending time in places that are confined you know, have confined spaces like those areas. You know, if you remember when we are in the hospital area, there are a couple of rooms which I entered and there were, say, two nurses at once. And they were pretty close to me straight away after entering that room, you know, which, was, which is why I just pretty much turned around and went straight out the door. I would have been hit if I didn't. So, I don't like spending much time in those types of areas, okay? I don't like spending much time in the prison area. There's a section in the prison area where we need to navigate like uh, after we use the wire cutters on a certain area to get through a door. We've got almost like this maze section that we need to navigate through. Okay, there's quite a few ways to go, ladders to climb up and so on and so on. I just go through it the shortest way possible. Okay, I don't ex do any unnecessary exploring or you know, going to further away areas, I just cut straight, cut the bullshit and just get straight, the, you know, they get the hell out of there, um, because there are a lot of spitter areas in the prison, okay, and I don't like running around a corner and being surprised and spat on, okay, but uh, at this point, I'm doing okay damage-wise, okay, I've been hit a few times. Look, it's inevitable that you are going to get hit, okay? Spitters, look, you're going to run into them around corners and so on. You you might get spat on a couple of times, but if you have played hard mode frequently, okay, you might know that as soon as you hear crack on the radio, pretty much start running in the opposite direction so that you are nowhere near them because they are very fast, the enemies on uh, hard. Those guys there, like that one I just shot, they're harmless, okay? They they do virtually nothing to you. If they do manage to hit you, which they rarely ever will, doesn't take too much damage. The small bugs, the critters that crawl along the ground, okay? We saw them in the apartments. They are probably the most annoying enemies in the game solely for the fact that I can't kill them, okay? I don't know how to kill them. There have been times where I've kicked them, okay? And they've managed to die or I have shot them a couple of times it is rare however so whenever I encounter an area where there are those small critter bugs I just I don't spend any time in that area okay I just get the fuck out of there as quick as possible and that actually reminds me what happened on a previous attempt okay and especially in the sub scenario born from a wish sub scenario where he plays Maria in that apartment area, when you get to the west side apartments, okay, that's mainly where all the bugs are. And on my first time playing that sub scenario, uh, I put it on hard, hard difficulty, you know, hard action level. And the game actually froze in that area, okay, where all the bugs were crawling around. And I think it's 
due to the fact that there's just so much shit going on, you know, like, they were not only the walking spitters or whatever they were and those weird leg creatures that we're, we're sort of facing here as well, you got the bugs crawling around, my radio static was out of control, I, I could hear the headphones, you know, the head, my headphones that I was using, they were starting to crackle a bit, and I just thought to myself, something's not right here, and bang, the game froze. Okay, so, and that's actually happened to me once on the main campaign, this as well, okay, on a hard playthrough. The reason why it froze, I think, is because I wasn't killing anything, I was just running past it. Whereas here, in those corridors in the apartments, I did stop, I took the time to kill the spitters or whatever else was lingering in the area. Obviously, I didn't kill those crawling bugs because they're a fucking nightmare to cure. But, you know, it's I killed them, so I think that re reduced the congestion on the screen at once. Causing the game to lag and, you know, crack a bit. That's the... You know, that's the only problem I can think of with this HD collection. Look, I've never played Silent Hill, the old ones on, on the old consoles like PlayStation, PS2 and so on. So this was my first time ever playing an old school Silent Hill game, okay, Silent Hill 2. I had played Silent Hill Homecoming and I, I enjoyed that, you know, it was good. Didn't really know what was going on. P tried to play Downpour, that was... I found that to be just rubbish, okay. There was a section, I found it to be too hard puzzle wise. I set it on normal and I was getting through an area and I can't remember what area it was but I just remember seeing a puzzle and I could not for the life of me figure it, figure it out, you know, and I was exploring every nook and cranny available to me. You know, every available pixel of that area was searched and analysed and looked at. Every wall was looked at, every note was read. And then I got to the puzzle and it just had nothing to do with anything that I'd looked at. And I thought, how the fuck do I get past this? Anyway, I tried a whole bunch, spent like an hour and a half trying to get through it. Because um, I hate using guides on first playthroughs. Um, tried every single combination that I could think of. Trial and error. And I still couldn't get it to work. Anyway, I was almost at breaking point. I gave up. Looked at a guide. It showed me the answers. I looked at the answers. I looked at the puzzle. And I thought to myself... Even with these answers in front of me, I still have no idea how they came to the conclusion of this puzzle. Like, I had the answers in front of me, I had the puzzle in front of me, and I still had no idea how it was, uh, how they came about with those answers, you know what I mean? At that point, I stopped playing the game and I'm never playing it again. It was fucking bullshit. There was also a part in Downpour where you need... <laughs> That's the problem with Downpour, you know. You'll pick up a weapon, like here, if you pick up a melee weapon like a stick or a pipe, whatever. You can hit enemies like crazy, it never breaks, you can use it endlessly. Okay? But on Downpour, you know, a couple of swings and the thing breaks and you've got to go and try and find another weapon. And it was just frustrating, you know. You never really had a set weapon, you were always picking up shit. And there was a section where, in order to progress, you needed to pull down a ladder with a certain hook rod weapon that you pick up, okay? I had absolutely no idea that you, it was required to do that, okay? Um, so that also caused, caused me to give up on the game as well. Um, but yeah, this is my first time playing an old school Silent Hill game, okay? I just set it on normal for both action and puzzle, you know, the first time I played through it. Um, I didn't find it too bad puzzle-wise. The coin puzzle gave me a bit of trouble, okay? A bit of bullshit involved in that because, I don't know, you get three coins, you know, the old man, the snake, and the prisoner. Apparently the prisoner is a woman, okay? Um, so that's when you're reading the puzzle, you know, it's saying... The woman hereby is to the left of the um, whatever, blah, blah, blah. The woman is referring to the prisoner coin, okay? So that was a bit bullshit there, but... Sort of through trial and error, I think I got through that puzzle. The rest of the puzzles weren't too bad. They were pretty easy, okay? But, um, you know, this game for me was all about story and atmosphere. And it's probably one of the best horror games I've ever played in my life, okay? It's just fucking amazing. It's, uh psychologically fucks with you, you know, it's not like 
new games these days like Dead Space, Resident Evil 5, and 6s and all that where it employs scare tactics, you know, you'll be walking down a corridor and all of a sudden a zombie or a monster pops out of a vent, grabs you and you got to shoot it quickly, frantically. That's fine, you know, but that that really isn't horror, that's just a, a simple scare tactic which any game can really employ. But this game, there's just so many questions, like even when I finished the game, I still questioned everything and didn't understand certain aspects of it. And I think games like that, that when you finish it, you know, leaves you to question things. And I think that's a great game, you know. It's a little bit disappointing that they didn't include Silent Hill 1 as part of this collection. That would have just been icing on the cake for me, you know, to go back where it all started. But I sort of can understand it's probably too old, that game. You know, that one was on the PlayStation 1, whereas Part 2 and 3 and 4 I believe were all on the uh, PS2. 4 would have been nice to play, that that looks interesting to me. I may get that for the PC, I know there's a PC version out there so we'll see what happens in that regard. But anyway we're still here killing shit, okay it's been a while, we're still on the streets going crazy. We're gonna head to the park soon, a couple of minutes alright. So how many shots are these guys still taking? Let's have a look. One. Two. Oh, I reckon that one. I reckon I shot that one before. That's bullshit. Rarely, rarely ever do you take down a nurse in two shotgun shells, okay? Especially when you fire the, the first shot from a fair distance. That's bullshit, but we'll see what happens when we... Here we go. Oh, it's two of them. Alright, so this is a bit of a tricky situation here, Kate. I'm getting out of here, as you can see. Um, they do walk quite fast. I do end up taking down both of them okay because I want to get the kills here but um hopefully one of them starts walking away which can happen okay yeah see as you can see the one on the left there is walking away which is good if you turn the flashlight off enemies have a harder time seeing where you are it's only when you sort of get in the near vicinity of them especially with the flashlight on that they tend to notice you so I mean you can use that tactic if you, you can, Sorry, I can. Blah, blah, blah. You can use that tactic if you want. You know, run around with your flashlight off. However, you know this game really is dark. It's very difficult to see, and you're in such an open area here in the streets anyway. So you can easily dodge stuff if you if you get cornered or get fucked up or whatever. You know, you got a lot of leg room to run around and do stuff. Whereas at the start of the game I did turn off my flashlight when I entered the apartments area okay because I didn't have actually I didn't even have the flashlight sorry to start with so I had to run around in darkness and basically it's good for that apartments area where you first start because the spitters are all walking around and some you know by having the flashlight off there's less chance that they'll spit on you you know it's not always foolproof though there's been times when I've had it off and they've just spat at me anyway so I've just been like you know fuck this I'm just gonna turn it on anyway who cares at least I'll see where it's coming from also the way I've been reloading I don't know if you guys have noticed this but I mean I might bring it up here in a minute it should do two three four Okay, four. Uh, okay, so as you can see there, I've got the ammo for the shotgun selected. You can actually reload the shotgun by just pressing the ammo and hitting reload. Okay, I always like to have it on the ammo there. That way I know how my ammo situation is looking, you know. Whereas if I press start and reload with my shotgun equipped, I can only see, you know, okay, I've got four, now I've reloaded, I've got six. I'm, you know, I have to scroll right and then back to the shotgun again if I want to check my ammo count. Whereas just having the shotgun ammo selected like that, you know, easily keep track of your ammo account and you can reload via the ammo, so to speak, as well, okay? You don't have to scroll to the shotgun and then press A on the shotgun and hit reload type thing. 
and here we are we finally made it to where we need to go behind this statue here we've dug up the hole and I'm just going to use the wrench to get the historical society key which is what we need there it is alright so we can finally make our way to the historical society you can go ahead and run straight there if you've got the necessary you know if you're comfortable with the amount of kills you got I'd probably only recommend going there if you've got about 65 65 like I said before okay if you've got less than that spend a bit more time here and kill shit okay like I've said before when I finished this game I had 43 minutes to spare you can do a lot of killing in that time okay although you may have been going a little bit slower may have been going faster, I don't know how you guys have been going time wise so you need to just sort of assess that and you know see where you're at another thing and I think I just did it there actually okay after using that wrench okay when I used it it automatically scrolled to the small health potion without me realizing so I just killed a nurse there right and I press start and out of habit I've just smashed A, A, pressed A twice, you know, because that selects the shotgun ammo, then I press A again and it hits reload. What I've done was I used a small health potion. Not a big deal, but still a bit annoying. So before you go ahead and mash A, A, you know, to quickly reload, just make sure that you've actually got that ammo selected. You know, you don't want to go ahead and use an amp hole or a... Uh, a health kit that you don't need to. I'm not sure if it has any effect on in regards to the uh, total damage taken at the end. You know, I think that just means total damage taken, you know what I mean? So say for example at the end of the game there's an enemy like a nurse, this is just a hypothetical situation, and say you've taken, I don't know, 470 damage, say it hits you, okay? and that brings you to 485 damage or whatever I'm just making this up and you don't heal and you finish the game do you finish the game with 470 damage or 485 damage because you haven't used a health potion to heal you I, I don't know I'm a bit wary of using health so basically what I do is I just use the health items when it gets red basically or it's really you can tell when you're starting to get low when there's a lot of lines going through your health status okay fidgety lines that's when I'll usually pop a small health potion or, or whatever I think what I said is bullshit anyway you know it's pretty much just damage taken if you get hit you get hit so to speak I don't think it matters if you go ahead and heal heal all of that damage and then finish the game whatever you know what I mean but just to be on the safe side I didn't so yeah it doesn't I don't think it really matters but here we are we're on this long stretch now on the way to the historical society quite a few nurses on the way but two at a time here bit of bullshit okay this fight may take a little while I probably should just run over and kick that one just rack up you know instead of taking a long time here so I've just fucked myself up a bit. I could have just kicked that one on the ground there. It's a lot easier to uh, see what you're doing. Okay, so I decided to... Oh no, what am I doing? I must desperately want those shooting kills. <laughs> Far out. So yeah, it's a lot easier to see where you go wrong when you're just watching yourself play as opposed to being under the pressure, you know, under the pump, so to speak, playing in real time. Because there's just so much shit going on, there's noises, the radio, that radio static is really fucking annoying, okay, but I tend to turn it off on lower difficulties, like beginner through to normal, because it's just so irritating, but for hard playthrough and for your 10 star rank playthrough, okay, I'd highly re recommend that you keep that radio on, because, you know, you need to know where shit is, oh my god, there's two more here as well, fuck, I'm gonna, yep. I think I just got hit then, that was not good. That was very fucking stupid. I, I could see that coming a mile away. A mile away, just watching it. Obviously I didn't while I was playing. And got hit. 
But yeah, in regards to that radio static, I mean, if you feel that comfortable that you can get through this, you know, knowing all the locations where enemies are coming from and so on without that static sound, go ahead and turn it off. But, you know, just for the purposes of the 10 star rank, I'd highly recommend that you keep it on, okay? This is an, en an enjoyable run, okay? It's you're under pressure and it's mainly due to the fact that you know you've got a time limit, so you're constantly just worrying about how how much time you've got left and so on. And look, you know, I think I started playing at four o'clock in the afternoon, and by the time I finished, it was about four, five, six, fifty or something like that. So when I finished, I thought, "Fuck, you know, I only had ten minutes to spare, get through it." But it doesn't. I don't know, it's a bit strange. It always, the time always works out less for some reason. You know, and the first save point, that first save that I got to in the hospital, okay, that was like an hour and 20 minutes on my watch type thing, you know, but when I saved it, it said 62 minutes. So it must just minus out the transition scenes when you enter doors and cut scenes. It must cut all that garbage out and so on and so on. Which is good, you know, so if you feel like you, that you've hit just the three hour and like five minute mark, for example, and you think, oh no, I'm fucked, I'm going to have to start again, just keep playing, finish the game, you might be surprised, you know, you might end up with like two hours and 52 minutes and, and still get it. So that's just a handy thing to note, you know, the game itself always tends to be uh, less time than what you what you think you've done. Uh, here we're in the historical society. Bang! Just grab the obsidian goblet. Okay, that is another special or secret item, so to speak. So pretty much got them all now. You know, um, blue gem chainsaw, dog key, hyper spray, the white chrism which was in the apartments. That was in the room where the coin puzzle was in. Okay, the same room. Book of lost memories that was in the Texan gas station newspaper stand and we just got the obsidian goblet there K okay, which was in the historical society one of the cases the cabinet cases display cases whatever and the last special item the book of crimson ceremony chrism ceremony or some shit I think it's called that's a little bit tricky to get because Basically, it's at the very end of the game, okay, just before you finish, and you'll you'll watch the videotape, and your temptation will be to go to the opposite room and put the dog key in the door and finish it, okay, because you're freaking out about time, and you're like, yeah, yeah I want to get this shit over with. Don't do that. Go down the stairs, and you need to re-enter the reading room. You guys should know all this shit anyway by now, from getting the rebirth ending, you know, you need to do all that to get it anyway, but, um... You know, just just be mindful to grab that, okay, before you go ahead and use the dog key on the observatory room door. Um, time pressure might freak you out a bit and think, oh shit, I gotta just open this door, man. Yeah, don't don't worry. Make sure you get it from the reading room first, okay.